In 80 days of isolation, will people break down? In a hospital, Dr. Anna comforts the children. Their parents are now in quarantine. When Anna came out of her room, she also had a coughing feet. Then she met the head nurse and asked everyone who came to the hospital to put on masks. But that's just not going to happen. Now the CDC is requiring that all hospitals must open their doors. When they arrived at the door, the Jack was holding his wife and looking for a treatment. After a brief explanation of his condition, the Jack next to him leads them to the treatment point. By now, the entrance to the hospital has been blocked by a large number number of cars. And now the world doesn't know, they just think it's a simple flu. In the cinema, people are gathered to watch the play. Suddenly, a famous actor named Arthur collapsed on the stage. Cat, who was in the audience, ran up to the stage to administer first aid, but it was too late. Then the police arrived to investigate the people who came into contact with Arthur. They simply asked what had happened. As Jack prepared to leave, spotted the girl in the corner, standing by herself. Jack was kind enough to ask, to learn that the girl was a performer here. After helping to find someone to take care of the girl, Jack was ready to go home. While waiting for a taxi, Jack turned around and spotted the girl, where he was standing alone. Once again, he went up to find out what was going on, and learned that the person who had taken care of him, had left the area with the ambulance. Jack decided to take him home. On the underground, Jack called his girlfriend on the phone, and she asked him straight out if he knew what happened with the flu. She told him to quarantine his home, lock the doors and windows, and to take all the necessary precautions, stay away from crowds, take care of his brother, and he up the phone, another image suddenly appeared in Jack's mind. Jack's name is Jack. He suffers from panic attacks. He can't move to another dimension. He walks a girl to her door, but the girl's parents weren't home. That's when he had his panic attack. Back to reality, Jack told the girl a lie took him away to look after him. They went to the supermarket to buy supplies. They bought five shopping trolleys of supplies before leaving. As they pushed their carts on their way home, a car in front of them was stuck in the snow. It's trying to back up. Jack went to check it out. The man in the car was about to open the door. Jack pushed him back and told him that he'd call the emergency services. Wait in the car. Don't open the door. Then he panicked and went back to the girl and left. When Jack and the girl got on the lift, a stranger, Anna, wanted to ride with them. Jack panicked and pressed the button to close the door. But Anna opened the door before it closed. When Anna was about to enter, Jack agitatedly asked Anna to get out of the lift. Anna was scared off. She stood still. They go back inside. The girlfriend's brother questioned Jack why he bought so much food. Jack says there's a virus outbreak. We have to stay in the house. While the two of them were arguing about it, suddenly they heard a noise. The girl told them to look out the window. A plane flew past the window. They ran to the window. They watched the plane fall to the ground. It burst into flames. The three never dared to go out again. The first few days of quarantine, they had plenty of food. Watching the news on TV, the government advised people to stay at home in quarantine. But as time passed, the TV was off the air, the phones are down, the internet is down, and the power goes up and down. The situation seems to be very serious. Today is the 79th day. They're running out of food. Jack says they should get out and find help, but they have unfinished business. Frank had finished his autobiography and the girl's stage play. Jack was on the verge of a breakdown. He had no choice but to go back to the tent he'd set up. He went back to the tent he'd set up. He started talking to himself. And when he came out, he told Frank in a loud voice that he was going out on his own. The girl stopped Jack, asked Jack not to go out until after the play tomorrow. Jack finally agreed. In the neighbor's house downstairs, he found a shortwave radio, looked up at the broken glass. He went to the window and looked down at his feet. I don't know what he was thinking. When he came back inside, Jack Jack was fixing the shortwave radio. The girl prepared the last of the tin food. The girl gave the two of them scripts. After the play tomorrow, they're leaving the house. Jack was complaining about the long lines in the script. And then, the radio suddenly came on. But the dialogue was worse than their situation. Jack turned off the shortwave radio. Frank told Jack that if he died, and asked him to take care of the girl. And secondly, to fulfill the girl's wish, they dressed up in costumes made by the girl, and put on a stage show. At that moment, a homeless man broke up their play. Jack yelled at the girl to run. The hobo threatened to leave the house with a dagger in his hand. Frank refused the hobo. He was enraged. He came at him, dagger to Frank's stomach. Jack rushes in and tackles the homeless man. But he was too late. Frank fell to the ground, pulls out the dagger. He looked at the wound and didn't bandage it. The tramp prepares to rise. Jack pushes him down. It hit the corner of the table. He couldn't get up. Jack hits the homeless man hard with a stick and saw that he wasn't breathing. Jack immediately ran towards Frank. When he looked at Frank's injuries, there was a lot of blood coming out. Frank said, take care of the girl with every ounce of strength he had. And then he left them. Jack simply wrapped Frank up. He put him on the bed in the bedroom. He took the girl out of the AE day quarantine. When they stepped outside, the world became very quiet.
It was like a pause button had been pressed. They found shelter. And that's when, there was a voice on the radio. On the radio, Jack introduced himself as Jack. They said they needed a doctor. When they asked where they lived, Jack didn't want to give away his location. He just made up an address. After a brief exchange, the radio went silent. They came here. It's been a long time since they've been out. Jack decided to go into town tomorrow to gather supplies. The girl asked Jack, are you leaving? The next day, they arrived in town. Jack looks for supplies. The girl controls the high ground. Keep an eye on the perimeter, inside the room. He searches everything he can. He finds a wig, open the garage, contacts the girl to look at him, to add a little color to his fretful life. But he didn't wait for the girl's voice. The man in front of him stopped him, and knocked him right down. When a stranger stepped forward to Jack, Jack knocked the stranger unconscious. He panicked and called for the girl, but the girl was reading a book about Station Eleven. Jack came back and didn't get mad. He told the girl about the supplies he'd found. On the way home, the girl ran to check out the trap he'd set. Jack looks at the book in his bag and throws it to the side of the road. In the evening, they finally got to see a field. Jack told the girl, the virus is long gone, that it was time to get out of here and find more people to live with. The girl ignored him. She just turned around and looked in her bag. She didn't find any books. It reminded him of Jack's behavior on the way back. The girl decided to go out and look for them. Jack stopped the girl. He said what was on his mind. He blamed the girl for putting on the play and killing his brother. Not his brother. Frank told him to take care of the girl. Take care of the girl. But he's just trying to get him home. He wanted to take him home. He's been saying some mean things. But Jack was already dressed. Told the girl to stay inside. He'd find it. On the side of the road, he picked up the book and was about to go back. A wolf jumped on her. In the morning, Jack woke up from his coma. His toes were half eaten. He tried to stand up, but he didn't have the strength. He took out his heat shield and put it over his body. It gave him temporary shelter from the cold. I don't know how long it took. He finally got up. He slowly made his way home, but he fell to the ground. He saw his home in front of him. He was in despair. Then a motorbike came along in the distance. When Jack opened his eyes again, he was in an unfamiliar environment. He had been sleeping there for 16 days. A group of pregnant women came forward. They were the very people who needed a doctor on the shortwave raid. Oh, when he said he wanted to get out of here, Dr. Anna took out a sedative and told Jack that the virus has taken 9 billion people. In the next week, they're expecting 16 babies in a viral world. Dr. Anna needs an assistant. When Jack wakes up again, still wants to get out of here as soon as possible. Dr. Anna lifted the covers. His feet are severely infected. Now he can't go anywhere. In the evening, Anna came to the bed and woke him up and told him when he heard there were girls there. He immediately went back to look for her, but the girl was no longer there. A few days later, Jack could get out of bed and walk. A few days of contact, she embraced Anna. A relationship was established. Countless new lives were born in the maternity ward, but one pregnant woman didn't survive. But mother's love chose to keep her baby. On this day, Jack decided to leave to find the girl. Twenty years later, Jack and Anna live by a lake. He and Anna have three children. They live here every day in a warm and cozy way. On this day, a troop is on tour. In the cast, a lady looked into the crowd. She saw Jack in the crowd. Jack walks up to her in disbelief. They didn't say a word. They just look at each other. Twenty years of hugging. In this moment, Jack finally found the girl. Anna had found her lover. She toured with the troop, and Jack had a family of his own. They said goodbye to each other at the crossroads of the woods to a new life.